A very empowering feature in Twill is the block editor. It gives options to an author to be inventive with the presentation while at the same time consistently manage data. To recap what our project is, we're building a website that features websites built with Twill. In this next episode of our series, we'll be adding a module to learn about the people building these sites. I'm calling it Contributor. Besides input fields for the name and a picture, there will be a field to upload a resume as a PDF file. There will also be a block editor for creating a biography with a custom layout. The features we're exploring are a part of Twill as a default. We'll set up the file upload for submitting a PDF of a resume. We'll work with some basic content blocks to give an author some options when creating a biography. And finally, create a custom content block that will have a unique role and a purpose. In this screencast, I'm going to do things in reverse order by showing you the completed form and actions first. It'll be easier to use the result as a point of reference as we construct our form. In Contributors, we'll start by adding a new person. For this example, I'm using Tim Berners-Lee because he knows a thing or two about websites. In the Skills section, I can select an HTML tag, but also add some additional tags. These will now be options for choosing skills in the future. Choose Resume, upload a PDF, and then select the file to insert into our form. I'll select an image to use for his avatar. The crop ratio is set to 1, giving us a square. Notice it's updating on the page as I adjust the crop. You see this kind of feedback often with Twill. I'm filling in email, Twitter, portfolio link, and LinkedIn address. Then onto skill biography. Clicking on it shows me four content block options. I select paragraph and enter some placeholder text. Close this block and then add a quote block. However, this is not the only way to work with blocks of content. You'll see a link for open in editor and also a button labeled editor at the top right of the page. Clicking on either will open a content editor page where you can lay out your page and see it as it would appear on the live site. It's referencing the same CSS files as the front end and has a handy drag bar for responsive previewing. So there's no guessing how the page will present. By clicking a section on the right side of the page, I see the corresponding input field to the left. Making changes to a field, I see the results in real time. Adding content is as simple as dragging in a block. Formatting text presents results in real time. Now I'd like to drag in a slightly more sophisticated block, paragraph and image. This workflow should look familiar to how we use forms. And really, content blocks are like many forms. I can crop an image, choose how it aligns with text, even set the width of an image when seen with a wide desktop viewport versus a tablet viewport. In this case, I want the image one-third wide for desktop and one-half wide for tablet. The mobile first default is full width. I can check that by dragging the view handle. Because I'm recording this screen, I can't show you how this works on a wide viewport. You do see it update between mobile and tablet though. I'm adding some placeholder text for the last field. These blocks can be reordered by merely dragging up or down. The last block is a unique piece of content unto itself. The purpose is to spotlight a past project in a specific format. It'll display as a card and can be placed anywhere in the biography. There's an image, a header, a link, and a description. Watch in real time as I fill in the form. Now I will add a little more text with a paragraph block. As I review this, I'm wondering if his picture would be better on the left side. No, I think I'll put it back to the right. 
After clicking Update, I return to the main form and the block editor is updated. OK, let's start with my data worksheet. Twill does not require this. It's how I organize data in a project. I list each field with the name I'll use for the database, the kind of migration, the kind of input, and any additional notes like validation or storage. But we have four fields that use some of Twill's built-in functionality. For the biography, a block editor. The avatar image will use medias. Resume will rely on files. And skills will use tags. Except for tags, the other three will initiate from the artisan command line. Looking at the Twill module help command, we see blocks, slugs, medias for images, and files. Let's scaffold what we need for our module, contributor. Twill generates a migration file and will edit the configuration for our project. We'll add some settings to our contributor model, set the slug field to base the value on the name, designate resume to represent a file uploaded by filling in files params, and lastly, set the crop configuration for avatar. Watch the previous episodes in this series if anything here looks unfamiliar. The ratio of one is a square. I will enable the use of tags by adding a reference to the twill behavior, handle tags. We're letting the controller know to use name as the identifying field. When you see a list of contributors, it's a list of names. Usually title is used as a default, but we're replacing that with the name. The last two minor changes are for navigation and routes. As I said, much here is already covered in previous episodes. From here on, we'll be looking at some specific configurations for working with a block editor. Let's start with a request file. Rules for updating follow the Laravel paradigm for validation, except for the field blocks. It designates valid blocks for the rules required in a successful submission. We can figure that elsewhere. Blocks are available to any data entity within our little system. So configuring image crops and validation will be at a higher level. We set that information in Twill's config file. When configuring a module to use a block, it will have access to any block you define. For our website, I'm defining four blocks. First is quote text, and that will be a simple input that stores a string. A stylized block quote blade template renders the quote. Paragraph takes text as input. Blocks can be reordered, so I like to use this approach if I want to change the content text flow of my page. Paragraph and image is similar, but now I have some alignment and image sizing options as well. And finally, Pass Project Spotlight has specific fields for making a nice text card about a website. The card has a clickable link to the site, and the display has an image, a headline, and a short description. At the top, we see settings for the file library, size limit, and allowed extensions. The size limit is in megabytes. In the block editor are the configurations for form settings, image crops, and validation. Taking a look at crops, and this should be familiar, we see designated crops that have different roles. Notice the settings for variable image does not have a ratio, and this allows the editor to crop the image without restrictions. Next is the block editor. Each block in the CMS is like a mini form. A block can be defined as simple or sophisticated. Taking a look at our first block, quote, there is a field value which we'll use when rendering the content. The title identifies the block on the admin page. There is an icon to help visually identify the block. The component setting follows a strict naming convention, lowercase a17 hyphen block hyphen, and then the lowercase name of your block using an underscore for space. This naming convention identifies your block to the system. Let's look at a few more of our blocks. Our last block has an additional rules setting, which provides a means of validating the fields listed. Our next stop is the contributor form. The first field type is tags, which we are labeling as skills with a note of example. The next field type is files, used for uploading a contributor's resume. 
Our medias field should look familiar to handling a picture. The remaining input types are all used for string inputs. Our last field type is the block editor. We see the names of each block listed for this contributor form. It also reminds us that we can reuse a block with other modules. Let's take a closer look at how a block works. When I show the editor and how it displayed blocks, you might have noticed that it was using Tailwind as a CSS framework. The blocks are rendering with the intended front end style in the editor. A block is just a blade template and we wrap it with a simple container to render the display. Notice how it's merely a minimal page blade template with a front end CSS and a standard yield directive. The sole purpose of this file is to do precisely that. If you prefer, it's possible to use a different blade template for this purpose. It just requires a change in the configuration file. This path is the default, and for now, we'll use it. On the left, I'm showing you the form block. We see a field configured with a standard parameter, name, label, and placeholder text. And on the right, we have a view block. It functions as a blade template. Looking more closely, we see block input. Block is an eloquent model that comes with a couple of helpers to retrieve the data saved for this block. The helper here, input, retrieves the data identified as quote underscore text. Our paragraph block is very similar. On the left, we're using a typical form field for writing text, and on the right, we have a view block to show the stored value for paragraph. Now with paragraph and image, we can get more sophisticated. On the left, it's just like a form page. We have variable image to select a picture. Then we have an unpack select field to choose an alignment. I'm using Tailwind, so my actual values are CSS classes to achieve the alignment I'd like. The two select fields below set image width for desktop and tablet. The mobile first default is full wide. Our last form field is the WYSIWYG text editor for a paragraph. Examining our view block shows how to access an image value. Both the name of the image and the crop, in this case default, are passed to a helper labeled image. At the top of this view block, I assign some short variables only to make the blade template easier to examine. This is not a requirement when working with blocks. You do see how the blocks input helper gives us access to the data, data then used in our blade template. Our last block is project detail. On the left, a form with inputs for project title, project URL, project image, and project description. And on the right, a view block using these values in a blade template. Notice how I'm using an include blade directive to pull in an SVG for spotlight. I felt it was too lengthy a string to put in this template and keep this layout understandable, so I'm just using the include to pull in the file. A tip I'd like to share from my workflow is to keep a folder of blocks you might reuse. It's just a pair of files, a form block and a view block. For example, a slideshow based on an Instagram feed. People love that. There are a few things I'd like to look at before ending that I mentioned earlier. Selecting the right icon to identify your form block can be helpful to the end user. Here's the directory where the SVG files are stored. Notice some of the ones we use today. You can use these file names when configuring an icon for a block. We're going to look inside Twill at some of the helpers we used in the view blocks. Here we see the input helper, and below we see a translated input helper. A little lower we see a helper for checkboxes, which appears to return a boolean value. Take a look inside the Twill directory and you'll start to discover how your admin is powered. In our next video, we'll connect projects to contributors and go even further working with blocks. Thank you for watching.